morning. Good morning, Kimberly. How's it going? It's going wonderful. How about you? Good. Very good. good. Had a nice time camping by Lake Livingston, hiking, campfire, all that kind of good stuff. And it was really pretty well, weather. It's beautiful outside now. Must be nice. It was um, 20 degrees each night here in Ohio. Oh. So that was lovely. <laughs> well, so, I will trade that. Cold. I'll trade that for our summers here in Houston because they suck. Uh, oh. Anyway, hi, Brutal. Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> What's up, Mama? <laughs> Not a whole heck of a He's lot. Real He's real mellow? He's real mellow. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know Earlier what? he was acting like a hard ass, and I was like, why are you acting like a hard ass right now? He's like, who said I'm acting? <laughs> He's <laughs> hard ass. <laughs> Smart ass and a hard ass. Uh, all right, well, so there's a, uh, with this recent election, and I'm not going to tell anybody who I voted for because I didn't like either of them, but anyway, um, uh, there's a lot of anxiety because of the results. So I thought maybe to allay anxiety or maybe to make things worse, I don't know, we'd ask uh, Eric, ask you some qu uh, questions about Trump, the new uh, president-elect. How do you feel about that? Good? <clears throat> <laughs> he's like, let's do it. And he's like shaking his chest. Oh, no, the shimmy. <laughs> the Hillary shimmy. Yeah. Oh, no. All right, well. Uh, Lord, it's <laughs> oh, shit. How about this first? Oh, my how will the economy fare over the next four years? These are from blog members, a lot of them. And how will job growth and unemployment do? He says... Um, Ooh, he's like scratching his head. He's like, where do you want me to start? He says, um, just yeah, you're gonna talk have to keep, keep, keep him a little short because I got 28 questions. So the economy do fine, will not do good, job growth good, unemployment good, bad. He says, with the economy, he like he does this with his hands. He says, it's gonna be you're gonna see it become very secure. And he, he actually gives the word like safe, it's oh, gonna good. feel very safe, well, secure. Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> Will he bring in the jobs that he says he'll bring in? He says, Mom, he will, but I feel like in that, he's also going to be, what I actually see is a lot of people losing their jobs, but when I ask Eric, I'm like, okay, who are these people losing their jobs and why? Oh, the government <clears throat> he, people. Yeah. He gives me, like, um, identity with a question mark. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means like illegal immigrants. Well, tell us, I don't Eric. know what that means. Is that illegal? I mean, he might shut down some uh, the Department of Education and things like that. So there could be some government because the government is way too big. He might be shutting down some government jobs. Could it be that? This is what he said. Um, when I asked him, I said, "Is it illegal immigrant?" He says, "You're going to see a big shift in that category," but that's not what he's talking about. Okay. He says, "You're going to see." Um, <clears throat> you're going to see these this is how he puts it energetically and the, these are the words that he gives equality among like the little people when it mm -hmm. comes to jobs okay. like the little people and uh, I hate using that term but it's I it, it kind of makes me feel like we we're when we go from like upper class all the way down um, the little people are, is where he's going to ensure like security oh, good. so I think you're head on when he's talking about um, or when you were talking about the government, um, he says it's going to be like reverse, like the Good. people, the common people, common, the layman, like the, the common people are going to have strength, voice, um, independence again, like, okay. So let's help mom, the middle class. changes are, um, yeah, but he says that these changes are, um, it's he like snaps his finger, so I, he does make me feel like these changes will be quick or abrupt. So like the adjustment to him might take some time, but he shows me like a quick, abrupt. Okay. Change. Will he be successful, so. and will he be reelected? His success, he's kind of going like this with his hands. Okay. Eric is. Um, it doesn't, okay, that doesn't define his success, his support. That's what it defines. Oh, okay. His support of people. Um, everyone right now, and I don't know who he's referring to really, just Americans, I suppose, he says, is more in a state of 
prove it before I support you. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's true or not, but he says they're all kind of like prove it before I support you. He'll be able to prove it. Eric okay. says financial will he, security will is he, will he he be will be re- successful. Okay. Good. Will he be reelected for a second term? Um, wow, that's some heavy information that I don't know that I want to translate in this session. Okay, well, <laughs> forget it. Oh, he's either going to be assassinated uh, or die because he's so old. But don't, don't say. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll share with you personally, Elisa, but on a platform like this, no, I don't know okay. if I want to share that. All right, that's fine. Uh, will he help the Latino, African American, and LGBT communities, like he says? Um, he says he will, but I don't know that the, he will be um, as effective as he anticipates. But then also, Eric says I, I don't know that that's a priority of his right now. Okay. Um, so I think sooner or later he'll address it, but it's not a priority. Uh, Eric, you're being so obscure. Jesus. Talk about being in the hot seat. Oh, I know. Sorry. Let me tell my husband to stop (laughs) calling me. He keeps calling me, so I'm going to tell him I'm in his session. Okay. Uh, Is he a racist? Yep. Okay. That's what Eric says. Um, He has very strong opinions and he's looking at you going like this <laughs> he's like bouncing his eyebrows he says he has very strong opinions about certain people certain types of people mom because of his personal experience but he pushes this back into his past so okay. i don't know what he's been through in his past but it's kind of like um when someone's done something wrong to you or made something difficult you hold on to that and i think that's where his um issues um stem from does he, uh, respect, does he respect women? This is what he sees. Um, respect, yes, but he still thinks men are up here and women are down here. Okay. So. Will the uh, Supreme Court of the United States become. He can respect. He can. <laughs> very okay. Sorry. The, he's laughing and he's like, he can respect and he can be civil with them, but. He still sees them as, like, um, less than. Oh. Will the Supreme Court become more conservative as he appoints new ones uh, to replace the ones that retire? And is this a good or bad thing? Ooh. Um, His answer is, like, yes, but in fear. Um, So it seems like the it seems like they become very cautious. Um of every move they make because of fear. I don't know what they're afraid of. It seems like, um, he said, Eric, I said, when I said that Eric said leaving a trail. So it's almost like they, they, Ooh, they don't want to be known. Like they don't want to be known for the decisions they make or actions they take. So it seems like they're going to be very cautious, very apprehensive to, um, well, maybe it's because the public has gotten more liberal. The U S has gotten more liberal. So it's hard to be for them to be conservative. Is that why? Um, yeah, because they're they're afraid. He says it's like they. Um, it's almost like it's very similar to so many people right now don't want to know, don't want to be known for who they voted for. I know. Um, like afraid of the way people will judge them. So if this is the same thing. Okay. They don't want to be known. Well, is it by good? Or, the, is it good or bad to have? originalists, those who interpret the constitutional as an original versus, the, in other words, a conservative versus a, an activist that legislates from the bench and thinks that the Constitution is a living, breathing document. What's a better thing? He says, um, he kind of sees it as Ugh, this will ruffle some feathers, I'm sure. He kind of sees it as a um, a bad thing because it, it's, of course, there's foundation with it, Mom, mm-hmm. but it's it's stunting growth. Um, he says it's not allowing change and evolution. He says it it provides a fa- a foundation, but it's not 
allowing change and it's not like forward progression. We're going to continue to evolve in, um, these are Eric's words, mm -hmm. um, in radical ways mm -hmm. <clears throat> and continually subjecting ourselves to this document is always like reeling ourselves back in, like pulling ourselves back. Okay. So, um, he sees it as like a, okay. a barrier Let, to grow. Let's go on real quickly. Will he drain the swamp, as he says, and get rid of the a lot of the Washington corruption? Because um, on both sides of the aisle, there's so much. Eric, it, he literally like stepped into Trump's shoes and acted like he was Trump, and he's like, mark my words. That's what he said. Oh, so I think that's a yes. Oh, good. Will he establish term limits? I'm very doubtful about that one, but but they can grandfather it in, you know, like, okay, anybody who retires, the one that comes in has term limits, that kind of thing. He's showing, like, um, again, I don't think this is a, a an actual priority of his. Um you were breaking up a little bit, so I didn't quite hear your question, but Eric is still responding. He says, okay. like, there's going to be caps. He's talking something about caps, um, like things being capped off. Okay. But he says it's not on the list of priorities. Okay. But he, he will eventually establish term limits? He will. Okay. It's going to be some time. I'm surprised about that. Will he build the wall slash vents? In part or in whole? <laughs> he says yes, but again, it's like one of those great intentions that um, uh, it's like he, this is, this is interesting how he shows it to me. He shows it to me like he says yes, and he shows um, like all of the, everything is there that's needed to manifest this, except pulling the trigger on it, he says. Okay. Um, so... I don't know if it's just that it's not on his priority list again. Like well, Eric literally might have to battle, might, might have to battle a lot of people for that, and you need the money for it too. But um, is he immigrant friendly? I mean, does he is he pro immigration though? Legal immigration? Ooh, Eric says, "What do you consider friendly?" <laughs> he says, um, he, "He's very black." I mean, and white in about other words. Uh, he says he'll build a wall, but it'll have a door through it so that people can come through. Not really, a, I'm talking figuratively, but so that people can come in legally. I mean, we're a nation of immigrants, but legal immigrants. He says, he says, mom, um, he's, he wants to answer your question about is he friendly because this is a hot topic, he says. Okay. Friendly with immigrants, he says, well, it depends on what you consider friendly. He's very... Um, he sees them, and again, this is Eric's perspective, you guys, so don't hate the messenger, but he says he sees them as a source of corruption. Um, I don't really know what that means, corruption to us as a whole. I'm not sure. So he, um, it's like he, he needs to keep them at bay or push them away. Um, but essentially, Mom, no matter, he says, you have to look at the bigger picture. Um <laughs> he's he goes this is going to ruffle some feathers he goes bear with me he goes but let's fuck it up he's like let's just let's just shake things up a little yeah, bit come on. So he says that you have to look at the bigger picture it doesn't matter um who you are or where you came from if you have to um see someone and identify them as different and and put your judgment on them or your own biases or whatever then um you're forgetting why you even exist. And he like sat back and he crossed his arms like this, like he's annoyed. Um, so in the way that he describes Trump and his views with immigrants, I think he can be civil with them. He can be friendly, but he still has that judgment against them. Like he can't accept who they are because of that label. So, and, and in the bigger scheme of things, he makes me feel like, oh, this is Eric's perspective that okay. Trump is asleep. He's not conscious. Okay. He's not awake. I believe to that. that concept. All right. Will he cut our taxes? At least give some relief to the middle class. Um, he says yes. I don't feel like it's going to be a lot, but he says yes. Any little bit is 
better than nothing. Will I wages, think this is going to be something. It'll take time. Will wages go up? Go ahead. Sorry. I think, I think we have like a three second delay in our video. So I'm sorry oh. if I keep interrupting. <laughs> oh, no problem. Will wages go up finally? He says, yeah. Oh, good. He just answers that like a well, matter of fact. He's like, yeah. Okay. Will the country be more polarized or will he eventually help unite us over time? Uh, Eric, this is how he's answering your question. It's so funny how animated he can be. Sometimes he'll use words, other times he'll just use image. And he sat back and intent intentionally like zipped his lips and he went like this. Okay. Like showing like more, more um, union. Well, if the economy does well, that's a big unifying force. So everybody, the economy is so important to people. You have to have food on the table and a roof over your head. Uh, is this the beginning of the decline of America? One blog member wants to ask. Boy, they sure do give him a lot of power. No kidding. And that's exactly how he's answering this. If you choose to see it that way, that's how you'll experience it. No, but... He says, uh, he says it depends, you know, first of all, address your personal perspective and how you anticipate uh, um, this whole uh, presidency. He says, now, set that aside and allow yourself to accept what is and how it's happening. Now, to more directly answer that question on the human note, he says, like the human level, um, this is not the beginning of a financial decline, but he does make me feel like it almost, this is what it feels like, because now he's speaking clair, through clairsentience. It feels like I have more enemies now. Like, I am America, and now I feel like I have more enemies. Yeah, because so, we're, we're going to be more, he wants a, a nationalistic approach instead of a globalistic approach. He wants to, you know, be more of a sovereign, make us more of a sovereign nation and honor American exceptionalism, which a lot of other countries, uh, you know, balk at. I mean, what makes America so special? Um, yeah. So it makes us yeah. seem kind of arrogant. Well, will he make America great again, as he promises? Um, he says yes, but sadly through fear. Okay. So, ISIS um, will fear us, fear, hopefully. Fear among us, and then other countries will fear us. So, he says, That's not good. Eric's, opinion, Eric's opinion says, is that really great? So, well, in what way will he make us great? Just economically? He says financially strong, and I feel like... This is the trickle-down effect, Eric says, like the financial strength, the security, down into the, the um, middle-class home, like you were describing, um, things being a little bit easier, people can breathe easier. That, Mom, he says, think about the, tri the um, trickle-down effect, okay? And then the collateral effect. So everybody generally is a little bit happier, life's a little bit easier, people get along a little bit better, mm -hmm. but... As a group, as a whole, he says, um, it seems like their life feels a little bit easier, but there's um, a lot of fear associated with it too. But the fear, the fear too, is, is highly associated with countries that he's referring to. Um, financial okay. strength, yes. All right. He says, you'll will the stock market do well or poorly under a Trump pre presidency? It's already doing really well. Dang. Um, he's like showing everything like that points up. Everything like arrows pointing up, he's oh, pointing good. up. All right. So it seems like it'll be really... doing well. Okay. Did he really rape that 13-year-old? Wow, never heard of that. Um, he says, nope. And he went like this and he leaned forward. Oh, people want money, yeah. Um, um, no, I've never heard that. Jeez. Will his foreign policy be sound, and will he stop the spread of ISIS? I think he will probably make a lot of countries fear us because he'll want fair trade, and you know he's going to have a harder line on with the Iran nuclear deal and all that. But uh, will his foreign policy be sound? This blog member asks. 
and will he help stop the spread? Well, just one at a time. Foreign he policy says, saying yes. yes or no. Okay. He said, and it's interesting what he's going on to talk about. He's showing like, this is really interesting. Um, wow. If this day comes to pass, I'll be like mind blown, I guess. But oh. he's showing um, after Trump is no longer president, it's almost like the co other countries still address him as if he is. Like that's the power that or the leadership that he establishes. Mm -hmm. But I feel like like what Eric is saying is he has to break a lot of old patterns and systems and rules or whatever, order of operations mm -hmm. and start new. Like he literally Eric makes me feel like he has to recreate the wheel and he's going to. Mm -hmm. That's going to shatter a lot of um old cycles, old patterns in talking about fair trade. But he says, um, this is going to establish dependent or not dependency, um, consistency. Okay. Um, maybe. He keeps using these words of like um, very strong systems put in place that are effective good. in a okay. good way. Well, that's good. Uh, will he stop the spread of ISIS? Um, he says yes. Okay. It's going to be um, it's going to be slow in the beginning, and then you'll see it like it's like a slow beginning, and then all of a sudden it's very a very okay. quick turnover. Okay. Um, Can he be trusted with the nuclear codes? Everybody's worried about that one. He says yeah. Um, he's talking about his like impulsiveness, or like he's very impulsive, um, but. He also understands um, the magnitude of seriousness here. So he says, yeah. yeah, he can be trusted. Will there be World War III under his rule? He said no very quickly. It's funny because all these questions make me feel incredibly ignorant. Because you guys know I keep myself secluded from all that. All news. So well, that's, <laughs> that's probably best. It's been very depressing right. over the last several months. Will he cut entitlements? He gives me 50% on this one. He won't give me a complete yes or a complete no. Will he like, just he takes change it, but in a pain, will he change it in a painless way or a painful way? Maybe I'll ask it that way. It's going to be, he's, he says it's going to be perceived in a painful way. Oh, boy. Uh, well, is it just about cutting the fraud in the entitlement system, fraud, fraud uh, waste, and abuse? Because that'll be painful for the people who are committing fraud, but not for everybody else. Um, one, he says yes, and I want to explain something to you and, and to everybody that would be watching. When you ask questions that basically boil down to a yes or no answer, mm -hmm. here's how this whole process works. And don't worry, I have plenty of time for this video and more. So, um, when something resonates with Eric as truth, his energy gets stronger because mm -hmm. you're acting as a ground for him. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm just the conduit. You're the ground. So if mm -hmm. it's truth as to what um, he can convey, his energy gets stronger. If it's not, he gets real quiet. He doesn't respond or he just kind of resonates and stays the same. So um, I just wanted to explain that little. Cool. Interesting. Um, so I'm a lightning <laughs> rod. Yay. <laughs> you're my ground, mama. There we go. Okay, where were we? But, um, so yeah, he it does will... make me in a in a painful way, but but in a way that reveals truth. Well, so I don't know what that done. means. But something's if it's be like done. exposing exposing the frauds or, or what you know that that essentially is truth. But um, there will be people that go through pain because of these changes. He says, mm. innocent people. Nope. He says, oh, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> will he cut the deficit and I, debt or will he add to it? Um, he shows us coming out of debt slightly, but it's not a great impact. Not because yeah, he wants yet, to spend a impact. lot too, you know, with the infrastructure and all that. So, yeah. He shows that he, he says that he'll cut it like slightly, but it's not going to be a great impact on it. How will he get Mexico to pay for the wall? 
I'm thinking they're not going to write them a check, but we give them billions of dollars in foreign aid every year. They could, we could just withhold that until their check is, their tab is clear. This is what he um, is talking about. He makes me feel like, and again, I'm incredibly ignorant to this stuff, but I still live a happy life, so I don't care. <laughs> um, he makes me feel like um, we supply to Mexico in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and that will be withheld, and whatever we supply to them, they can't go without um, so I feel it's almost, this is really sad, but Eric says it's like a hostage situation yeah. where like they have to pay or have to give or something. Yeah, like you don't get so your foreign aid unless, yeah, maybe that. Okay. It, yeah, yeah, it's essentially like a hostage How situation. How do you understand why we pay um, all these countries foreign aid anyway, really? I don't get it. We have so many people suffering here that need help. Uh, will we be more or less respected around the globe under his le leadership? We'll be feared. He said we'll be respected out of fear. Oh, well, at least it's respect. But what will be done with, I, 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 I know he'll probably get rid of the criminal illegal, undocumented workers, but what about the other 11 million undocumented people here? What will he do with those? Some of them have lived here for 20 years, you know, and have families and businesses and stuff. Will he just this give them where, a pathway to citizenship or work visas and then a pathway to citizenship or something like that? Yeah, he actually makes me feel like um, I I don't think that he's literally going to, like, ship them all back or ship them out or whatever. He literally yeah. shows me Trump, like, creating a system that they have to go through. But I feel like this is a very brand new thing. It's, like, um, born from Trump's um, presidency where um, – <laughs> They sort of they have to go through these um, systems to achieve a status like a, a um, uh, citizenship. But um, that sounds fair. He keeps using he keeps using the word like grandfathered in. Like they have to be they have to go through this, and then they kind of like get grandfathered into their citizenship. Okay. Um, but it's a very it's also again it's very strict, and it's like if they're not willing to comply, that's where. It again could be like a hostage situation where, like, you know, either comply to this or see you later. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I think it's fair. I mean, they've cut cut in front of everybody else that's in, trying to do it legally, so of course, but they should have a way to to get to citizenship. Of course, will he repeal and replace Obamacare, or will he just amend it, or what, what's going to happen there? Um. Eric's like real nonchalant about this. He says it'll be gone. Okay, well, he's like flare nostrils. He says it'll be gone. Will it transition um, such that people are not taken off, uh, not without insurance? He's showing it uh, insurance becoming more widespread, um, easier coverage, and this is kind of like. This is what he's showing me. I don't. I guess I don't really know what you would call it, but it's almost like, based on where you live, um, I can't. I can't even imagine such a change. But he's talking about like based on where you live, like you pay a certain amount um, to the government or federal government. I'm not sure, but then whew, he's making my ear ring. Huh? But then that um, covers. Like you pay by your by your uh, location, you pay by okay. where you live, mm. and essentially, like there's widespread coverage okay. um, and security in that. So he's showing like more so. He goes, if you want to go down to your zip code, you can. So your zip code sort of determines um, how much you pay, I guess. Okay. And then it's almost like car insurance. If you pay, it's like you you pay into this big. You know, this big pot is like literally showing this big like pot a risk of money. Pool. Maybe like and a then risk that, pool. Sounds like a risk that pool. That essentially is yeah. everybody's coverage. Uh, will um, it be cheaper than Obamacare is? Because my sister Laura called me saying she got a notice that her hers went up to like $1,700 a month. And that's just not tenable. Um. 
he just keeps repeating over and over and over and over, compare it to Canada, compare it to Canada, compare it. He just keeps saying that. So when he was talking about this like zip code thing, um, paying by your zip code or something, that will determine how much you pay. So of course, I think if you live in more um, high end locations, you may wind up paying more. But when he's talking about, um, he says no to your follow up question. He's shaking his head no. Will it get more more expensive? Oh, good. Um, I think it's based on where you live and. Okay. Will there be <laughs> like, like the, a public uh, option, like people who can't afford it? They'll. I mean, is that what you're saying? Be a public option and a private option? Or will it all be health savings account, insurance sold across state lines, like he says, and tort reform? Um, he's not really answering that question. He just keeps repeating, like, he, again, he's talking about, um, man, this is kind of scary. It's like, again, okay, let's say, for example, here's your zip code. This is how much you pay a year, a month. I don't know. And then if you can't, if you can't afford that, it's almost like you get punished. Um, I don't know if you get fees or what, but it's, I feel like I'm facing punishment now. Well, if, if you I can't, can't afford, afford it, it, you can't afford it. Um, and that's again where he's talking about like that having something to do with your citizenship. That's so scary to me. So if you're undocumented, you don't, you don't get the insurance. Is that what he's saying? If you're an illegal, um, his energy got stronger. Okay. So that's what his it is. energy got stronger when you, that's okay. Him. What was, yeah. uh, what will he do if anything about the astronomical college tuition and student debt? Just a few more questions. Um, I don't think he's just going to wipe it clean. No. Um, I, I don't think it's just going to be this, you know, where it's just going to be forgiven. Um, Will he help in any Erickson, way? He'll put systems in place that make it more manageable. But um, he is someone who believes in, Eric says, he's someone who believes in, um, he, okay, he's repeating himself. He will put systems in place to help relieve it okay. and help and down to the personal level, help you, um, manage it. But he's somebody who believes in like <laughs> the cause and effect, I guess, but this is Trump's version. He says, if you created the debt, you're responsible. So still, yeah. um, there's still forcing some that personal into- responsibility. I yeah, mean, exactly. Don't be Making- a poetry major and expect to get a job to pay off your debt after you graduate. Well, what will we do, if anything, about the rising cost of college tuition? This is going to change. He shows um, Trump like breaking it down, like knocking it down and oh, capping good. it out, like okay. putting a cap. All right. Um, Manage it like the utilities, getting- maybe. What will his environmental policy- policies be like? Will Mother Earth hate him? He says he wants clean air and clean water. And um, I guess he wants the Keystone Pipeline, and environmentalists are all upset about that. But, of course, they could just, you know, clean up after themselves, plant some pretty azaleas around the pumps, and everything's fine. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, people. He's, <laughs> he's showing, um, gosh, as far as environmentally friendly, Eric just kind of looks and he, he gives a big old question mark. Like he doesn't really believe in, um, Trump being like an advocate <laughs> for the environment. That's, that's okay. the way Eric showed it. All right. I don't know. Will he make our environment uh, worse because of his policies? Just a yes or no. Ah, uh, you're going to see a lot of waste initially, but then, um, wait, he's like, like, uh, exhausting resources that, um, damage the environment. But I think Eric says it's necessary to go through that phase to change it around. Then I think you do see a complete turnaround oh, good. Okay. where Thank God. Um, he finds, um, more natural ways to achieve what he wants. I don't know why Eric finds this topic so funny. Um, he goes, he looked at me, he goes, Kim, we're talking about Trump. I, yeah, so it's funny. All right, real quick, real quick. 
Uh, will he get rid of any departments like the Department of Education, Energy, blah, blah, blah? Um, oh, the again, IRS Eric's would real, be nice. Get rid of the IRS. Eric's real weak on this. He says um, he will, but I, I don't know if it's just going to be like there's some time before he actually um, asserts this, but um, his energy is real weak in answering that question. So right now. So he will, he says, yes. but not right away? Yeah, and I don't think it's on the, again. Not on the mom, priorities. He, like you, he's got a, he's got his list. Here's his priority list, and then over here is like, oh yeah, there's some other things. Yeah. So well, I don't can't do everything at once. I guess. Will he get rid of the significant amount of fraud, waste, and duplication in the government? Just a yes or no. He says yeah. Okay. What last question? What will our relationship with Russia and China be like? He shows us, when he looks at China, um, he shows us above them. I don't know if that means financially or um, well, I'm not exactly saying, sure Eric? what that means. Use your when words. He's showing, Use your words. He, he's using image. He's showing like the U.S. here, here's China, and then Russia is, is um, at the same level. It's very interesting, though. Between us and Russia, there's a lot of tension. Between us and China, there's not. Um, okay based on what Eric is showing. So I think that's why we're level at level playing field, I guess, with Russia. Like, <laughs> it doesn't feel good, though. Um, it feels like a lot of tension. It feels like a lot of mutual fear and mutual respect out of fear. When we look well, at China, it seems peace like Peace through strength, man. Um, peace through strength. Maybe that's the whole idea. And, and then he just repeated and said strength in numbers. So... I don't know if we just buddy up. I can't imagine. That's not what it feels like. But then when I look at China, it just feels very friendly. It feels okay. easy. All like right. they're, um, again, I don't know if they just respect us a lot now out of fear because of him or what, but he shows them. Well, if he revamps um, a our military, below. you know, if he brings our military back up to the 21st century, then maybe that's where the fear is going to come from. Like Reagan, you know, peace through strength. Well, is that what he's saying? Hopefully. I just don't like fear. To be yeah, a because part of the it equation, seems. But. Yeah, because what he's actually showing me when, and this is what it feels like, just to try to translate. He's showing, like, you know, here's us, here's Russia. We're very much at level playing fields, um, but we're also like a loose cannon, like ready to just blow at any minute because there's so much tension between mm. us. So it's like. Well, will everything be okay? Um, he says, yeah, okay. but you'll feel the tension. One question I did forget, and uh, that's the Iran nuclear deal. What's going to happen to that? I don't like that deal. I don't like that they're on the path to, they hate us. And I don't like that they're on the path to military nuclear weapons. Um, as far as us being involved, Eric says, um, you'll see Trump try to... Um, he says, you'll see Trump try to reform that or like change it again. I don't know what this is, but it, to me, it feels like, um, uh, just a ticking time bomb. I, I don't know what that means, but that's the feeling that Eric gives me. And it seems like Trump is able to disarm it. Okay. Good. So that's good. All right. Great. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Kim. That's a long You're YouTube, welcome. but people really need this to either. I don't know. I hope it helps people feel better. Maybe in some ways it'll, Make it feel worse, but um, we've got what we got. Hopefully. So everybody right. pray for Trump and our country. That's all we can do. Yeah. And hopefully he'll do a good job. All right. Eric said, don't forget to pray for yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. I'll well, talk to you in just a little, okay. little bit. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.